it's zero hours of the 20th of June. It's 2019. Maritime police from Frontex, the European Border and Coast Guard Agency, will search for refugees trying to cross from Turkey into Greece. This year, more than 50 people have died trying to cross, two this month. At the same time, it is early morning in Indonesia. Attendees at morning prayers will include Afghans who fled here. They thought they would be safe once in the world's largest Muslim country. The reality is different. In the United States, volunteers will wait near a border overwhelmed by migrants who are willing to risk it all. Everything you have ever had, everyone you have ever known, and flee to a country that you know is in all likelihood going to be hostile to you. But that's your only choice. Around the world, dignitaries and refugees will mark World Refugee Day, a single day representing a worldwide crisis that on this day seems to be only getting worse. These are just a few of the more than 70 million stories that can be told this day. On this single day, Voice of America sends more than 75 photojournalists to tell those stories. June 20th, 2019, it is World Refugee Day, the last World Refugee Day before the COVID pandemic. It's important that people are aware it's everyone's problem. A day like any other day in the life of refugees. Refugees and the smugglers who try to bring them from Turkey to Greece work most often in the dangerous darkness. Every time we're able to find a migrant boat and help them to safety, it means that we are doing our job. Yesterday we, uh, we had the same team on, uh, on patrol and we are spotted uh, uh, 37 migrants boat with babies and uh, little kids and the elder people. Uh, we were able to uh, uh, intercept the, the boat. We brought them all on board, all the refugees. Then we, we went to Scalas Camini, which is right there. And we thugged the boat with us where we dropped them off and the Greek Coast Guard took him to the refugee camp in Medellin. It was around this area, so... And tonight we're gonna be around this area as well. They stay on the Greek side of the strait, on hills overlooking the shore. You see a light there? More police with infrared cameras scan the patrol area. They look for changes in temperature that will indicate the presence of a boat or of bodies in the water. The, the moon is almost full. Uh, it's shedding a, a lot of light at the agency, right? So conditions are perfect for either part, for us and for the migrants. So far in 2019, Turkey has intercepted 100,000 refugees seeking shelter in Greece. 18,000 more have made it. It's perfect for everybody. At the same time, they stand out in prayer, looking a little different than the native Indonesians in this mosque. 
They fled here from Afghanistan because of persecution by the Taliban, but they have not yet found a home. They camp on the streets, but don't attract a lot of attention. Strangely enough, they want to be on the other side, behind the barbed wire and inside the government detention center. Being in detention would give them access to some services and at least semi-formal status. So far, their decision to leave Afghanistan has been the right one. Nobody here is trying to kill them. The first World Refugee Day celebration was hopeful. This is the time to open our arms and homes in friendship and in support of those who are less fortunate. Five newly arrived refugee families were symbolically welcomed to the United States. At the time, the displaced and refugee population was 19 million. So we have to create a stabler world. On World Refugee Day 2019, the official number of migrants, displaced people, and refugees has grown to more than three times higher. Seven hundred men, mostly Afghans, are being unhappily held here on a landfill surrounded by forests and minefields. Too much problem here, so no electrics, no toilets, no internet. We are homeless. Today, this 18-year-old will take matters into his own hands. Too much problem for refugees here. On World Refugee Day, he will sneak out to try to get to Italy or Croatia. It is his escape attempt number 22. The most recent was just a week ago. This time, we are five days in the jungle of Croatia. He calls evading the police a game. If you go to Italia, you win. If you catch police, you lose. That is like a game. He will play the game again tonight. Meanwhile, a modest event is being set up to showcase businesses started by refugees. Vendors are in their best clothes because there will be a guest of honor, the man who heads the world's refugee efforts. He will arrive soon. Libya draws refugees hoping to be smuggled across the water to what they think will be safety in Europe. It also draws smugglers and thugs who prey on refugees' desires. It often does not work out well. I was in the 
لزلة ففي زلة كمان يعني طلبوا مننا المبلغ ودفعنا 3500 دولار ثاني فكانت في عذاب وفي ضريب وفي اغتصاب للنساء فقام الشخص هذا أعطانا لشخص ثاني في بن وليد فبن وليد كمان يعني شفنا فيها العذاب والدق والأشياء كثيرة من العذاب كانوا بيعذبونا بالكهرباء وال... يعني أشياء كثير بالضرب والاقتصاب في النساء كمان وضرب الأطفال وكان ما في طعام ولا شرب و... فمنه طلعونا وصلنا طرابلس وطرابلس نزلونا في المدينة هذه ما هو حفظ دانا وليبيا من قد وليبيا هم بزيح مارينات ميت سمي عمز لك هم صاي بزيح نارينا عنا ليبيا مزيا وليبيا مسافنا تنيس لك حرصة هم صبا ايرها وكما مع رموتي يروا سيما لما تحكم الناس وزيبا من لبك احما مارنا مستخالفو بهن ليه حيليم بلا ما نانقل ليه يتيم لما تحكم الناس Today, he and his family live at a Red Crescent shelter. They are official asylum seekers, so they have freedom of movement. But the document gives no guarantees pending a final decision on his refugee status. His phone connects them with life back home in Eritrea, but they are just waiting for word. نفس الطريقة الأول جينا بها فالحياة بقت علينا صعبة نحن في ليبيا هنا عاقلين وأطفالنا عايشين في رعب وفي مشاكل ونتمنى هذا ونحن أصلا جينا لحياة نشوف حياة أفضل من اللي كنا عايشين فيها في ريتري في جحيم فحصلنا أتعب منها هلا 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 Eight thousand kilometers to the east, Mohammed Abu Kalam leaves his office to drive thirty-four kilometers to a series of World Refugee Day events in the world's largest refugee camp. He's the government official in charge of refugee policies in a country strained by the arrival of refugees from Myanmar. More than nine hundred thousand are under his control. We want to see an end to this crisis. Not only here, but globally. We want that the entire globe is free from this kind of problems. Bangladesh is one of the world's least developed countries. In 2019, there is increasing pressure to move resources from refugees to the Bangladeshi people. There may be talk of that at the camp when he arrives. Meanwhile, back in Tripoli, the assignment for this Red Crescent volunteer is to talk refugees out of trying to cross to Europe by sea. As proof, he brings photos of what became of some who tried. يعني ما فيش حتى كرام الميت ما فيش من يدفنك يعني حتى عن بدين بديننا إحنا وبإسلامنا يعني ما الأمر لا يجوز فهمت؟ But the visit is quick. It's not clear if the photos are persuasive. Only 113 kilometers from Africa. The closest European island is an attractive destination for migrants. A memorial for tourists shows that many who tried didn't make it. On World Refugee Day, we are sailing into the Mediterranean to meet up with one of two ships that are actively seeking out and rescuing migrants from the sea. The ships are operated by activist groups. There used to be more, but many countries have impounded the ships, saying the do-gooders who run them are only aiding human trafficking. 
the ship we are seeking is close to Lampedusa. But the Mediterranean is big, and for security, the ship is radio silent. Sixty-five hundred kilometers to the east, on this morning of World Refugee Day, a now single mother has plenty to do, but no one to help. Her husband has gone ahead in search of a better life. Now she and her two children wait in the home of her uncle. He fled to Turkey after getting death threats from the Taliban. He was to send for the family, but as of today, he has been gone two years and two months. Unbearable pressure, in fact. She's left alone with memories of her seven-year-old daughter killed in an airstrike. She says her younger son doesn't really know his father. Her worry is about her older boy. Today, we wait with her for a phone call that will let her talk to her husband. It's not enough to flee your homeland as a refugee. Your children sometimes pay the price. These boys were born here to Afghan parents. They comb landfills for scrap paper to sell so their families will eat. Occasionally, there's a find in the trash, but they know something is missing. Today, long hours are ahead. On World Refugee Day, it's no different. More than 9,000 kilometers to the southwest, 
The school day is starting at one of the world's oldest refugee camps. Refugee kids are taught biology and history by a Somali refugee. But she will only stay until she hears from Canada, where she has applied for a scholarship that would allow her to live and work there. Also this morning, Refugees who fled fighting in the Central African Republic have been brought together for commemoration of World Refugee Day. They hear encouragement from local dignitaries. They also get new t-shirts. Most of the world's 70 million refugees, migrants, and displaced people aren't in camps. They migrate to cities like this one. Just 35 kilometers across the water from Britain, migrants and refugees say they have been targeted. France has a current policy of no fix fixation points um, of migrants or refugees, and they're trying to do everything that they can to try and reduce people from, from staying in northern France. <laughs> The infrastructure to support refugees is in place. Almost 100 volunteers are here to feed all comers. But though there's a sense that there are plenty of resources, it's getting harder for them to actually help the refugees. The harassment techniques used by police forces against, them, against volunteers are many. And though police have driven many migrants out of sight, today we still find officers arresting several on the side of the road as we drive to the tent city called the jungle. Calais had a much bigger population of migrants so you see there's few refugees here. until three years ago when police closed the jungle. They put up fences to block routes to what had been thought of as a safe resting place. So here's the old jungle where 10,000 uh, people used to live. It's all empty now. Everything was evacuated, burned down, uh, gotten rid of right here. Forbidden access. But uh, the irony is that this place is now a resting place for migra migratory birds. So birds have the right to rest, but not human beings. Today, the jungle is rougher. When we arrive, they threaten our crew and stop us from filming. We have to pay one to take some cell phone photos. They complain police raid every two days to move them out. They're holding a press conference this afternoon to air their grievances. We'll have to hurry to make it. Back in Jordan, music signals the arrival of Filippo Grande at the fair. He has been the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees since 2016. In three years, the number of refugees, migrants, and displaced persons has grown from 60 million to nearly 71 million. His job is tough, to mobilize resources to help. He's been brought here to showcase what is possible for refugees to achieve. He learned it from his father. The refugees are at attention, proud of what they've made. But some booths he walks by without seeing, caught in conversation with another dignitary. About 1,700 kilometers away, World Refugee Day has started less formally. Adam and his family fled Syria in 2015, gradually moving north. When the border was closed, they were trapped. On World Refugee Day, they're still here. I'm like a lot of refugees who escaped from the war. 
escape from the a lot of things. We need uh, to find other future, to find the possibility for us, for my family. I thinking about for my family and what I can do for him. We need help to find uh, a good place to find the future. We need somebody to give to give us hand because we lost a lot of things and we are tired. Now we are. I lost my country before nine years or eight years. It's not easy for me. Because of the women and children, today, this camp feels more like a neighborhood. But the barbed wire isn't there to protect them from outsiders. It's to keep them in. In town, just a few kilometers away, a small table and two volunteers quietly mark World Refugee Day. With the camp so close by, information about those stranded in their country is not new. The bus arrives every morning from U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement Police. It brings undocumented migrants caught trying to cross the border with Mexico. Volunteers at Casa Alidas resettle these migrants. They provide them what they need, including transportation to a new home. Some are pregnant. Their babies will automatically become U.S. citizens. The U.S. is one of only two first world countries that grants unconditional citizenship at birth. On his first day in the U.S., one of those who just arrived is using an alias to explain his decision. Seeking a better life is different from being a refugee. But he's well on his way to making the American system work for him. He's been paroled by a U.S. immigration system that, by law, entitles border crossers to a hearing before deportation. Like the others who arrived today, he'll get clothes, food, and a bus ticket that tonight will take him away from the border and closer to his goal of a job in America. These folks are coming here to, to be part of the culture. They want to be part of America. They want, in a good way, to contribute to it. You know, they know that our country was built on hard work, on um, people of hope and faith who were willing to dedicate their lives to building something greater, and they want to be a part of that. They want to contribute to that. They're simply just asking for security and safety and having us give them the opportunity to, to grow and to take care of themselves and their families. So I have three, three people with children going to the bus. As new ones arrive, other immigrants get ready to leave. Bus tickets take them to places they've never been. Their immigration status is officially questionable. But if they don't commit crimes, they are unlikely to be deported. They will live in places that on World Refugee Day, they're learning about for the first time. Today, Thursday, is World Refugee Day in the United Nations. 3,100 kilometers to the east, Voice of America's Tibetan Service readies for its World Refugee Day newscast. Its centerpiece is their interview with the Dalai Lama, perhaps the world's best-known refugee. Many problems, you see, due to too much emphasis the concept of we and they. We are the same human being. When China exiled the Dalai Lama, the Indian government set aside land for Tibetans in exile.
Now, more than 70,000 Tibetans live here, including more than 400 monks at the Tashi Lanpo Monastery. On World Refugee Day, Tenzin Kunchuk is trying to get home. He hasn't seen his family since he was seven. He waits for word that the Chinese embassy, 1,800 kilometers away, is willing to see him for a first interview. He expects a no. Uh, I applied uh, seven or eight times. Yeah, I went there it's more than 10 times. Because the Chinese, uh, they don't like Tibetan Buddhist monk. But in exile, he has learned to be patient. Refugees strain resources. Countries like Mexico are caught in the middle. On World Refugee Day, Mexico is asking the United Nations for support. Nuestro país se enfrenta nuevos retos. El número de personas y familias migrantes que solicitan la condición de refugiado en nuestro país ha crecido exponencialmente. No están solos. Eh, les vamos a seguir apoyando de distintas formas para enfrentar los retos de la eh, llegada de refugiados al país. Yet today, police in Mexico are reported to be cracking down on migrants, a new development. World Refugee Day is Carolyn Lang's first day as an intern with the U.S. charity Mercy Corps. She will work along the Venezuelan border. As that nation collapses under the weight of socialism, Venezuelans are fleeing here to eastern Colombia. Mercy Corps gives them money for resettlement and to help them set up their own small businesses. Her job is getting information from those who have been helped. On her first day, she's still getting used to how to explain what she needs, so the team helps out. It's it's really difficult to, to have conversations that are so really intimate with someone. You're asking about um, the money that they're able to spend on um, their family, on food for their family, on shelter, on transportation, all these things that I think lots of people take for granted. It's, it's difficult. It's really difficult. The first person we spoke with was um, sort of much more excited and she was um, you know, very proud of, of, of her home and of her family and of what she'd been able to kind of uh, um, create for her family. Um, and then, as you could imagine, the other woman we spoke to was experiencing more challenges and was having a harder time. A tougher time, refugees say, because they're in a new country and longing for home. It's a day full of discoveries for this intern. He couldn't leave his son Omar back in Myanmar, and he can't abandon him now. The boy aged six is desperately sick from hydrocephalus, swelling from an accumulation of fluids in his brain. A doctor in Cox's Bazaar was to have operated today, but the surgery has been delayed. Today, the family must travel back to the Rohingya refugee camp before curfew at dark. It's an uncomfortable trip for the boy, a narrow, crowded roads. 
and a flat tire may mean they won't make it in time. Today is World Refugee Day. It is a day to honor you, the people among us who have been forced to flee. The statement taped earlier for distribution today gets some news agency coverage, but it's crowded out by other things making news this day. Just who gets the top jobs in Europe? Syria. Two ambulance workers and 14 civilians die in government airstrikes. Georgia. Riot police are called after a visiting Russian sits in the head of parliament's chair. 240 are hurt. Venezuela. Fired oil workers mass outside the Venezuelan vice president's office to demand back pay. Chile. Rocks are thrown as teachers take to the streets. They're demanding better pay, more funding, and improvement of working conditions. Are there any senators in the United States? Congressional hearings continue over threats to impeach the U.S. president. Do you think it's uh, appropriate to use DOD assets to paint a border wall? Washington. Legislators question military and border patrol officials about whether or not to use private contractors or government soldiers to paint the wall on the southern border of the U.S. Washington. The U.S. President and Canada's Prime Minister hold a joint news conference. We're, we're uh, very concerned about the escalation by Iran recently. We have Refugee issues do not come up. And many news outlets this day carry the story of a couple traveling by bicycle from France to Vietnam, raising money for charity. They cross borders freely. They have the connections to do so. It's Tina Teen's 18th birthday today. She lives with her family in a settlement for internally displaced persons. She and her family fled here in 2008 when Russian troops occupied their home village. It is less than 40 kilometers away but just a memory. Back at home, her grandmother watches the news. Eleven years later, tensions between Georgia and Russia are still high. At a refugee camp in Africa, the cry of twin girls. They were born today. Two more refugees on World Refugee Day. She fled after a failed coup. She now lives with neighbors. But with the babies, there's not enough space. She must move outside. She doesn't know how she will afford her twin babies. One of her biggest wishes for her and the girls? Soap.
No refugee mother has it easy. And it's tougher if you are alone. This young mother serves others with the help of her daughter. She fled here from Ethiopia. She hopes that one day she'll be able to return. She was widowed in war. She fled across the border. The UNHCR taught her how to make charcoal. Selling it has given her a new life. She misses her home, but having a business has taken her mind off the camp and separation. Back in Jordan, the walk through the craft fair has ended for the UNHCR head. Next, a quick handshake with Amman's mayor. Then, a regional conference on refugee issues. Prevention means eliminating the causes that force them to flee in the first place. Why don't you look at the root causes and the prevention and try to address that? The flows will go down more quickly than trying to build obstacles to people that, frankly, many of whom are in danger of their lives. Next, on to a visit with UNHCR workers. With 16,000 people on the UNHCR staff, opportunities to brief the boss are scarce. There's a lot to cover, and his day is not over. On the way to today's World Refugee Celebration at the world's largest refugee camp, Mohammed Kalam drives by the registered camp. It was first settled in the late 1970s by Rohingya refugees who were driven from Burma. Nearly 50 years later, a new, larger wave of Rohingya fleeing repression are under his care. He's joined for the ceremony by the U.S. ambassador to Bangladesh. Now we have built a bridge there, supported by Kika, Turkish uh, International Cooperation Agency. Now the, uh, the works are ongoing to link the bridge for a motorized access. But underlying tensions surface, and a refugee march turns into a protest. They chant, no more refugee life. The protesters are quickly moved along, and Kalam is on to his next stop. I'm ready. 13,500 kilometers away, a refugee from China makes a short drive to take his daughter to school. She practices the song she will be singing in class this day. This song has extra poignance. It's titled, God Bless America. Bye, Ella. After dropping her off, he has work to do on behalf of those he has left behind. More than 3,100 kilometers to the west, Border Patrol Officer George Gomez watches the border wall. Uh, this is where we were, we were seeing the majority of the entries coming in, where the smugglers were directing them Here. to come in through, right in between this orange cinder block building and this uh, white wall, this other cinder block wall. Many migrants don't wait for papers. You got anybody else down there? Nah, but we can hit. His job is to stop them. If you come in, uh, somewhere where it's not designated as a port of entry, you come in illegally, I have no discretion but to detain you, take you to the station, process you, what have you. But on World Refugee Day, he gets a pleasant surprise. This is something new that we had never seen before. The Mexican government have the National Guard actually out here on foot patrol visible, I guess in an attempt to deter people from actually crossing 
in here in this in this sector. A Mexican church has opened its doors to migrants. It's where Haitians waiting to get into the U.S. camp out and wait. Nothing special here marks World Refugee Day, but a sign on the front door indicates that there is a new policy today. It says, owing to the bad conduct of single Haitians, starting June 20th, only families are allowed. Yemi's, 15 years old, wears a Haitian flag as a headscarf. She's been here for more than a month. She's waiting for her number to be called to have an interview with U.S. immigration. There's no word yet. There's lots of time and little to do. Later, she will be babysitting. <laughs> Meanwhile, she has dreams to share. At the same moment in the U.S., music breaks the morning still. On the porch outside his apartment, Jay Abdo plays mournful music to remind him of home. His life here is very different from his life in Syria. Both better and worse than before. We have this, uh, also the meeting with the casting director. You know, I have a meeting with the casting director. He's just become a citizen after years as a refugee. His wife is still a refugee. We do what we can. Yeah, at least we can. In Syria, he was a popular actor. He will be great at audition. <laughs> he could have remained one even as the country fell apart if he followed the regime. He couldn't. In 2011, uh, when the uprising reached out to Syria, the regime asked me to support the military approach on TV, which I refused to do. And some of those who refused ended up in detention centers. And I was scared to death. He fled, thinking he'd be back in a couple of months. That was eight years ago. You can play all range of roles, right? Being a refugee actor in the United States is different from being a celebrity in the Middle East. He had to make changes. We'll see. In Syria, he had his pick of roles. Here, he must start over with auditions by video phone. Oh, look at roles are limited. This is a, a, a challenge for us. Just so you know, um, nobody can be so safe here. His given name, Jihad, became Jay, an Americanized name without political baggage. I'm good. Thank you so much for taking the call. He gets a call from an organizer of a refugee event to be held in a few months in Washington, D.C. I'm so honored. I can't believe. I'm, uh, I'm originally from Morocco, so I have watched some of uh, Jay's uh, series. So I told all my family. Oh, my God. <laughs> he has an audition for a paying job later today. But first, he'll go to an unlikely place. Some media do mark World Refugee Day. Another 70 million people have been forced from their homes because of persecution, rights abuses, conflict, and violence. The current number of displaced people worldwide roughly equals the population of France. Most people who are forced to leave their homes hope to come back. 
even those who have spent much of their lives in a refugee camp. Spain uh, is rather sensitive to the high number of refugees. The world's displaced population, which includes refugees, asylum seekers and internally displaced people, has doubled in 20 years. Around half of the refugee population were children. And deportation proceedings are underway for 35 people police call illegal migrants from Myanmar. They were arrested overnight on the border with Thailand. The Rohingya Muslims are fleeing what the United Nations calls ethnic cleansing. Police found them waiting to be smuggled across the border into Malaysia. One smuggler is also arrested. The music the Frontex Maritime Police are playing was, in fact, written by the son of a refugee. So music is a very important part of the, the hours we are here, okay? The refugee day, it's important because it's a worldwide problem. Countries that don't go through those problems think that it's not their problem, but it actually is because it's everyone's problem. Every night is almost the same if we don't have any, any events, okay? So we go to the area of responsibility. Uh, we go, we try to cover it back and forth. We stop the boat sometimes a little bit, keep communications with the TVV. As quiet as it is on the water, it is equally quiet on the hill overlooking the strait. It's now six in the morning. It was a quiet night. Uh, no boat passed to here. Everything is great. As they said, that's good for both sides. Their patrol resumes tonight. Thirteen thousand Kurdish refugees from Syria live here. Campaji zeta kahraba etna, yani kahraba campaign chicken, o avji kema. Asti majabi medir, dejara hatin kashuf kiri. Am na fashan bi akhi. If you kani jmara le, kena zubi ikhtiari te dana na fashan chilati hatta khlas bi abne elum sir madai, sir mati, qalanti, qashati, jmara chena kun, tishta ki jmara na. مدرسه ما گله کی نباشه جبولون توازن ه ه بچه کدیجی ما به علم درس درسی و بچه کی صعب ان توازن چه کی سهل بن Their complaints don't consider that here they are safer than they were in Syria Four refugees from Venezuela block the street in rush hour on World Refugee Day like other days. They go to work when the light turns red. <laughs> Tips from drivers are an alternative to begging. During a long, hot day, they make enough for themselves and their families here. Occasionally, there's extra to send home to relatives in Venezuela. In the afternoon, there's time with his son. Tonight, 
he will hit the tourist areas where the big money is. One thousand five hundred kilometers to the east, a recent Venezuelan refugee gets ready to find work for the first time. <sighs> His hat, worn with pride, has Venezuela's national colors. It sets him apart from Trinidad's citizens. He has often made the trip to town to help other refugees. Today, he'll help himself. On this day, his chances for a new job are not bad. The unemployment rate in Trinidad is less than 4%. Nearly 10,000 kilometers northeast, a light rain is falling. With nearly 4 million refugees, Turkey hosts more refugees than any other country. Here he has found both a home and success. He arrived in 2011. This day, he's a phenomenon. Owner of Syrian restaurants now franchised across the country, a role model for Syrians and an example of a refugee who has done well. He's hired hundreds of Syrians in Turkey and offers refugees a taste of home. World Refugee Day marks a new beginning for a self-titled Brother of Misfortune. He fled within his country four years ago when Russian troops attacked his village in the contested eastern Ukraine. Хотелось просто переселить бомбёжка в другом месте, не там, где стреляют, взрывают и так далее. И у жены немного нервная система подрасшаталась, но у детей тоже. Поэтому, чтобы всё это залечить, всё это восстановить, поэтому решили поехать. Today he starts a new job in a pharmaceutical lab. Although displaced, things are good. He's still in the same country, speaking the same language, and is among family. As World Refugee Day continues, the head of the Bangladesh Refugee Resettlement Agency is at his next event a friendly football match between Rohingya refugees and the surrounding community. Not all have shoes. For the refugees, it's a well-appreciated diversion with awards from an important man. Ayub is getting ready to slip out of the camp where he and other refugees are being held. There's no way to get word to his family in Afghanistan right now. He left behind three sisters, four brothers, and his mother and father. So, who is this? My father and this is my small brother. It's been 12 days since he last made contact, and he says there's a lot of crying when they do connect. He's starting a risky journey. This is my friend, and they train cut his legs. Here you can see here, there. For him, the risk is worth it. Just 200 kilometers east, another Afghan refugee is doing well. 
when you start the journey, you don't know what is the ending, what is waiting for you on the other side. I just wanted a place that is warm and I have food and that's I don't want anymore. Nothing much. He spends his days at a refugee center where he has learned English. He thought he could pass through to Hungary and get to Germany, but the border closed and it's been more than two and a half years. He stays in touch with home by watching VOA news from Afghanistan. Serbia is welcoming. Filippo Grandi likes to hear refugee success stories. The UN High Commissioner for Refugees is collecting his thoughts while a TV interview crew sets up. Camera loading. Camera? You ready? Success stories are rare in his business, even on World Refugee Day. Action. Go. I wanted two things when I was young. I wanted to do something useful. I did not know what useful meant, but I realized that there was out there a world that was much more turbulent, and I wanted to do something useful for people that were affected by that turbulence. And second, I wanted to travel. I wanted to see other places. After being in the refugee business for more than 30 years, he got his wishes. Are you afraid that the problem has gotten to the point where it's too large to fix, really? I refuse to entertain this narrative. And I think this is the danger. We are in a world in which we have a lot of unscrupulous politicians that are telling us exactly that, that it is impossible to stop this crisis of forced displacement. And you know what their solutions are? Push back, shut down, have restrictive legislation, build walls. That is a narrative that I don't accept. But more than 70 million people are displaced now around the world, and these numbers are are rising. So whose failure is this? Most of the people that we're talking about, these 70 million, are fleeing from war, violence, um, crisis. And uh, the international community has seems to have lost its ability to address and resolve these wars and this crisis, even on the most um, clear, straightforward humanitarian situations, like in Yemen, like in Syria, uh, even more so a few years ago, uh, and in other places, that unity that needs to be um, established by the various actors in in the international community, by the various states, to solve problems is lost. The Security Council is always divided. And the Security Council is the supreme institution for peace and security in the world. So if that doesn't happen, this figure, which is now almost 71 million, unfortunately, next year will be higher again. Hi, Commissioner Filippo Grandi. Thank you so much for your time today in Jordan. Leyluma's husband is finally calling from Turkey. But he has bad news again. He says he does not have money to obtain a passport and a visa to return to Afghanistan. There are no simple answers. Getting to him by phone is easy. Getting him home is tough. (laughs) 
Back from dropping his daughter at school, Ely Shiati keeps the history and heritage of the Uyghur people alive. One million Muslim Uyghurs are in Chinese re-education camps. He fled to Malaysia and made it to the United States. Now he tells the story of the repression of his people by China. There aren't many Uyghurs here, and he sometimes feels disconnected. It's a big responsibility. <laughs> Meantime, more than 9,200 kilometers east, refugees who fled from nearby Burundi are performing at their camp's celebration of World Refugee Day. These refugees survived, but many are still missing. There is a World Refugee Day celebration of sorts underway at this refugee camp in Somalia. The kids get treats. The adults are seen as a resettlement success story. <laughs> Bishilag <laughs> It's been four years since they fled Yemen by boat. With fighting continuing in Yemen, being here is worth smiling about. Today, this Syrian refugee is on her way to the hospital where her third child will be born. The arrival of the newborn will be bittersweet. It's a boy. Born in Jordan, he will not be a citizen. He will grow up as a refugee. He now shares a birthday with World Refugee Day. Growing up, unless something changes, he will learn from his mother that to be a refugee is to be an outsider. On the road from Cox's Bazaar to the refugee camp, a flat tire makes getting back to the camp more difficult for Omar and his family. Fortunately, the driver has a spare and can fix it. The day is getting late. Unable to get the medical care he needs, Omar is worn out. And the rented car pulls up just before the curfew. In the best of times, it would be tough to live with this condition. In a refugee camp, nearly impossible. Well, this is great. It's wonderful to have you. Across the Atlantic, in Washington, D.C. Welcome to Border Crossings. We have a very special program. The Voice of America's flagship music show today hosts a refugee from the Democratic Republic of Congo. We'd like to welcome to our studios and to Washington, D.C., an artist who gained acclaim by appearing on a very popular TV show in the United States called American Idol. The one and only Ron Bultongez, it's nice to have you in our studios, Ron. He ended up in the U.S., a trauma of its own. When I came to, this, to the States, first off, I was just like silent mode because I'd never seen so many white folks before. <laughs> you know? And you didn't um, speak the language. I didn't speak the language. <laughs> there, there was so much to soak up. What this has all taught me, the good and bad, is just how to love this whole process has taught me how to learn to love people. Mm -hmm. 
He's still a struggling musician, but with a fan club and a website and a chance to sing his songs on the radio, he is on his way. We have just found one of the ships that rescue refugees from the dangers of these deceptively calm waters. But they don't want to see us, even on World Refugee Day. They heard below deck 53 African migrants they just rescued. Some European governments say these ships are in league with the human traffickers each migrant has paid. Many of these ships have been impounded and their crews dispersed when they dock. Even on World Refugee Day, they turn us away. Back on Lampedusa, other refugees have just turned up. They arrived in small boats. Now in police custody, they are headed for the reception center for detention. It's uncertain whether this group will be held while seeking asylum, transferred to detention camps on the mainland, or be sent back. But even though they don't know where they are going, they sense it is better than where they've been. Ayub is ready. It's time for him to sneak away from the detention camp. He takes nothing to call attention to himself and heads towards a familiar route to both refugees and locals. He expects to be shaken down. And then maybe they're coming from center, they have home and center because they're coming and stopping people here and they take all his money and mobile, everything. And do they have some weapons? Yes, knife. This, play a lot of this was where some of the ambushes happened. Just walking, I will show you his place because it's very really dangerous. The town of Bihach is in view just beyond the hill. Some refugees get extra supplies there and come back to camp. Ayub is different. He wants out. Do you still think you will be catched? I think. I don't think, but uh, I think they will catch us in near of center. Here maybe until one, two kilometer more, no problem. And we will, if we and you, be in, coming into the near of center, they will, maybe they will catch me. In town, his plan is to disappear. Thank you very much. You. Good luck you with so your much. trip. Thank you so much, sir. Bye. Goodbye. The game is on again. Okay, thank you. It is midday on the west coast of the U.S. When he first arrived in Los Angeles, he went to the Jewish Family Services Food Bank for his meals. Can I get this order, please? Today, it's his day to volunteer at its kitchen. I got food for eight months till we found job. And now that we found jobs, I am working. My wife has a decent job. I am volunteering with the same organization to pack food for those people who can't afford it. And it feels very well and it keeps me connected to all the refugees and those who are in need. It's not because of World Refugee Day, it's just something he does. And it puts him in the right spirit for his audition tonight. Around the world, World Refugee Day continues. Catholic priests in Hungary hold a mass to support refugees. It puts the church at odds with Hungary's government, which has taken a strong anti-refugee stance.
Farki Weldai fled Eritrean violence to safety in the Tigray region of Ethiopia. Today, he's at Aksum University in training to become a nurse. He's optimistic about his future and says leaving home was the right choice. No word from immigration, so Yamis takes her sister for a walk. My name is... My name is... In Mexico, they stand out. The people are welcoming, and she's a regular customer. She doesn't seem worried about how long they'll be here or what comes next. But she does have dreams. She likes the feel of our camera. Her Spanish is good, and she has a big personality. If not in the U.S., maybe she has a future in photography in Mexico. There is no doctor in this part of the sprawling Dadaab refugee camp in Kenya. So the local pharmacist fills in. With more than a quarter million refugees here, there is plenty of need. Himself a refugee, he's proud to help. On another side of the camp, Nia Mooch Hope's World Refugee Day brings a sale. She has big dreams for her art. So as much as I have the talent and I might have the materials, market initiative. That is, unless you count selling to others in the refugee camp. This Syrian refugee is exhibiting today in an art show. He cuts up refugee tents and paints on them, a marketing angle that impresses art collectors. Not far away, the High Commissioner for Refugees is at a reception for would-be donors to refugee causes. There are many hands to shake and people to thank. Hopefully one day we can have solutions for all these refugees. And for the Syrian refugees, really, I hope that the solution will be safe, dignified, voluntary return to their homes in their country, which is what most of them want eventually to do when it is safe to do so. The reception and the day are winding down. Filippo Grandi heads to his hotel. In his part of the world, World Refugee Day is over. The head of Bangladesh's refugee agency is also heading back home. It's been a long day for Mohammed Kalam, and when he gets back to his office, he will still have other meetings tonight. Bangladesh is conflicted about housing the Rohingya. Even with foreign donors financing the cost of operating the camp, it takes a lot of the government's attention. At some point, the needs of Bangladesh citizens 
and the needs of the Rohingya may be in conflict. There is much for him to think about at the end of World Refugee Day. He takes to Facebook on World Refugee Day, then heads to an event with Italy's police academy. Italy's Deputy Prime Minister and Interior Minister, Matteo Salvini, has built his career and a substantial following by trying to close Italian ports to refugee ships and making it easier to deport refugees and migrants. Salvini says immigration without limits will bankrupt his country. On World Refugee Day, however, his focus is lowering taxes to grow Italy's economy. Opere pubbliche e taglio delle tasse. Altre ricette non ce ne sono. Meeting with government ministers, he talks about making life better for Italians. Like populist leaders in other countries, his initiatives resonate with citizens who believe that politicians are too quick to share scarce resources with newcomers that they would say have no right to be here. In Calais, we made it back from the jungle in time for the migrants' press conference. As I am from Sudan, I have been witness a lot. They complain about their treatment by French police, who they say unfairly harassed them. There was unfair fights. The event is put on by the migrants themselves. No other news cameras are there. As the sun sets, many in the camp are still outside. But inside his makeshift home, Omar perks up at the sound of a new toy. His parents are quiet. The thought of life-saving surgery is one of the many uncertainties ahead for these refugees. Another uncertainty is their status. Even if Omar's condition is cured, with Myanmar still discriminating against Rohingya, he is likely to remain a refugee here. We are in a little bit of a rush because a little, a little one here, um, we couldn't find him. <laughs> I think he was just having fun with his friends. And we're trying to catch right now the six o'clock bus. It is unclear if Juan Antonio realizes what it is taking to get him to the bus on time, or even if he's grateful. Learning English is something he'll do later. Back in Colombia, it is night. The Venezuela refugees move to the plaza where they compete with rival dance groups from Colombia for serious money from tourists. This night, not a lot of money. But he says that's not the only reason he does it. There are always competitors, and this is something you do only when you are young and healthy. If injured, what does the future hold for a refugee? At nighttime in California, Jay auditions for a job as a narrator. It's just beginning again at the international dateline and around the world at the dawn of a new day. For the test, he uses lines he performed in a play a year earlier. It quotes the English playwright William Shakespeare, who lived 400 years ago. Jay uses lines written back then that he says are appropriate on World Refugee Day. You'll put down strangers, kill them, cut their throats, possess their houses, Whither would you go?
mounds on a parched hillside. This refugee camp, Kakuma, is one of the world's oldest in continuous operation since 1992. This is its cemetery. Babies born here are likely to die here. On World Refugee Day, there are no visitors and no signs of who these refugees were or what they had hoped to become. Juan has made it to the bus station just in time. Back at Casa Alitas, a migrant from Guatemala takes his place. I see very brave people. I see people who are showing us an example of how you should live, that if you know that there's something you can do to protect your family better, that you will do it. Significa algo muy especial. Mi hija es único, único motivo para seguir viviendo y pues no quiero que le pase nada malo. For most refugees, migrants, and displaced people, their lives today were much like yesterday and will likely be the same tomorrow. What also will continue, the belief of the people we met that they can successfully make it to safety, no matter what the odds. I still remember leaving the border through the Congo River. It was just, just a day that not only, as I got older, I realized that it actually kind of traumatized me. It was like the best and most traumatizing day of my life at the same time. Because had that day not happened and things not worked out, there's no telling, you know, how life could have rolled out for me. Entonces ese, ese es mi propósito, digo, si ya Dios me tiene hasta acá, pues cumplir mis sueños y ayudar a, a salir adelante con mi familia. They understand what it, what you have to do to sacrifice everything for your family, or to come ahead to this country and try to be able to put some money together and send it back to the people who remain. It's difficult always to be uprooted and you go to a different country, it doesn't matter if it's heaven or not, but it's not your country. No, I don't want to go through again this refugee life. Este, lo que quiero es tratar de proteger a mi hija, y pues yo pienso que acá vamos a estar mejor. At the end of this World Refugee Day, there are happy endings for some. Fadia and Montasser, husband and wife from Iraq, are minutes away from being sworn in as U.S. citizens in a ceremony in Portland, Oregon. But first, the presiding official must wrestle with proper pronunciation. That's, that's right. Yes. She rolls her eyes. Here in the northwest part of the United States, there aren't a lot of people from there. The ceremony starts with the American National Anthem. For them and the others, the words are still a little unfamiliar. If you'll please raise your right hands. But, but I love my country. It's Iraq. And I love my country. Second country is America. So how we go. Congratulations, you're now a U.S. citizen. I know it's not easy to leave my, my family. I mean, it's not. It's a big change. It's new people, new country. It's um, new life, new food, big change. But I'm happy for my kids to give them a good future. Ultimately, World Refugee Day is ceremonial. It is one of many days on official calendars put out by organizations devoted to issues that, all too often, are in the shadows. 
Today, it recognized 70 million men, women, and children who have fled their homes in search of another, some out of fear and some in search of something better. But at the stroke of midnight, World Refugee Day ends. And refugees return to the shadows once more. drives me insane But I wouldn't want it any other way Rondo Tongues 